as I said earlier, most electrolysis questions won't actually be about the experiments. They'll be about the theory or the application. And the most important application, the one that you need to know about in detail, is the production of aluminium from its ore, bauxite or aluminium oxide. And the first question on this paper, which showed you an electrolysis setup for making aluminium, was why can aluminium not be extracted by heating aluminium oxide with carbon? And this also relates to the reactivity series. Aluminium is higher up than carbon, so carbon cannot displace aluminium from its oxide. Then the question went on to talk about various other things. For example, the molten aluminium is forming around the negative electrode. Why? Because aluminium ions are positive. It says the aluminium oxide is dissolved in molten cryolite. Now, molten cryolite is just another mineral that happens to melt at a much lower temperature than aluminium oxide. The melting point of aluminium oxide is about 2,000 degrees C, whereas cryolite has a melting point of only about 950 degrees C. So, rather than having to melt pure aluminium oxide, mix it with cryolite, and the whole thing melts at about 950 degrees C. So you save a lot of heat energy. You save a lot of fuel trying to heat it up. Uh, the next point is, so the aluminium ions go to the negative electrode. Now, aluminium, being in group 3, has aluminium 3 plus ions, so they have to gain 3 electrons to become aluminium. And remember, that's at the negative electrode. Some people get very hung up about which one's the cathode, which one's the anode. In an exam, uh, the cathode is the negative electrode. You don't need to know that. They'll tell you it's the negative electrode. And at the positive electrode, oxide ions, oxygen is in group 6, so when oxygen forms an ionic compound, it gains two electrons, so O2 minus. And that, when it makes oxygen, has to lose two electrons. But because oxygen goes round in pairs, you need two oxide ions to make oxygen, O2, and so altogether they have to give away four electrons. So that's the overall process. There's one other snag, and that is that because this is at a very high temperature, we have to use... For the electrode, something that isn't going to melt away or react with anything or dissolve in anything, and so we use graphite electrodes or carbon electrodes. Now, the problem with graphite is at a temperature of about 1,000 degrees, it will react with oxygen. Graphite is carbon, remember? At 1,000 degrees, it will react to make carbon dioxide. So... Gradually, these electrodes get eaten away. The oxygen combines with the carbon electrodes, so carbon dioxide gas bubbles off, and eventually the electrodes have to be replaced. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about the electrolysis of aluminium oxide and how we extract aluminium metal. So I've gone through quite a lot of exam papers trying to find a question that actually re relates to the experiments of electrolysis rather than the theory or the applications. And here's one that I've found that is quite possibly, uh, you know, quite, quite a good chance for this year or the next couple of years to come up in an exam because it does relate to both the practical procedure and in general terms about how to do experiments and how to do investigations. It was a question where rather than worrying too much about the electrolysis of a substance and trying to get the different elements out, you started with pure water and you added drops of sodium chloride, one drop at a time, stirred the solution, and recorded the reading on a conductivity meter. So you're measuring the how well the solution conducts. And you're not, you're not measuring how much product is produced at the electrodes, purely how well the solution conducts. And the idea behind that is, because you're adding more sodium chloride, an ionic compound, and it's dissolved in the water, then there are more ions to move around. If the, there are more ions moving in the solution, it will be a better conductor. A larger current will flow. And so there's a table of result. 
at result, uh, adding one to eight drops of sodium chloride, and you get a graph. And the first part of the graph was to plot the remaining results, draw a line of best fit, ignoring the anomalous result. And I haven't done that, but basically you get a straight line passing through the origin because it's directly proportional. The conductivity is directly proportional to the amount of sodium chloride. Double the number of ions, it conducts electricity twice as well. Um, one of the points is anomalous, so that's the one at two. It's much below the straight line if I'd plotted that. Suggest one error that the student may have made to cause the anomalous result. Well, I would say there are lots of possible errors, but the most obvious one, it says number of drops of sodium chloride. Drops aren't all exactly the same size. If you choose a drop that's smaller, or you just by accident add a smaller drop, you'll get not much more in the way of conductivity because you haven't added a decent amount extra of sodium chloride. The student wanted to compare the conductivity of sodium chloride solution with the conductivity of potassium chloride solution. State one variable he should keep constant when measuring the conductivity of the two solutions. Well, there are quite a few. You'd want to use the same volume of solution so that the same depth of electrodes are, are submerged. You'd want to use uh, the same concentration of your raw starting solution. You're adding one drop to two drops, three drops, four drops. You'd want to use the same concentration of that. A third thing, like with a lot of it chemistry experiments, you'd want to use the same temperature because temperature will affect how quickly the ions can move and that affects how well they conduct. The question then goes on to some theory. Explain in terms of bonding why pure water does not conduct electricity. So you would say pure water is a simple covalent molecule and it does not have any free ions or delocalized electrons that can move through the solution. Explain why sodium chloride solution conducts electricity because it contains ions that are free to move and carry charge through the solution or something like that. After he had added sodium chloride, the student noticed bubbles of gas at the negative electrode. Complete the sentence. The gas produced at the negative electrode is. Right. Now, a lot of people jumped to the wrong conclusion on this question. They said, oh, gas, sodium chloride, chlorine gas. No, chloride ions are negative, so chlorine goes to the positive electrode. In this case, what's forming at the negative electrode is hydrogen. Why? Because we've got sodium chloride in our solution, and sodium is a much more reactive metal, a much higher up the reactivity series than hydrogen. So in that circumstance, you always get hydrogen gas coming from the hydrogen ions in water, instead of the sodium ions forming sodium metal. And that's a very common question. Look out for that.